Thanks to everyone listening um, and, and joining us for this uh, recycling panel. Um, I'm from Zero Waste Victoria as well, so, and we've got a, a few councils with us here today. We've got uh, Mornington Peninsula here. We've got Amy Yang. Do you want to say hello, yeah, Amy? Morning, everyone. We've got uh, Joe from the city of Yarra. Good morning. Have we got city of Port Phillip here yet? Yes, Hi, Siobhan's here. Hi, Siobhan. Hello. Oh, hello. I'm Carolina, by the way, everyone. <laughs> Anyone else who's joined us? I'm Carolina from Zero West Victoria. And uh, yes, I, I, I'm on the Festival Planning Committee. Just on the planning uh, committee. Carolina helped, was one of the people bringing this event together. She wasn't just on the planning committee. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> thank, thank you, Kirsty. And I mean, Kirsty. I think you, you just introduced yourself, but you know, you're a Zero Waste Victoria president, uh, La Presidenta. <laughs> um, so thanks for being here too. Um, and Rose. Oh, no, I usually play that down. <laughs> no, but important to highlight today, important to highlight, and um, everyone gets to meet you that way too. So, um, and also one in a welcome, Rose. Rose Maclica from Recycling Made Easy and Recycling Champion from Hobson's Bay. So thanks for joining us, Rose. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, so it's great to have um, a, a, a nice, a, a varied uh, lineup from different communities um, and dif different councils, but also um, representing uh, community as a, as a resident and as a, as an, and as a, a local leader like, like Rose. So, um, we are talking about recycling and I guess recycling in, in general today uh, on this panel. And, um, and we're also promoting, uh, you know, apart from recycling, we're going to be uh, following this, we're, we're going to be doing a, a section on repair. So we are focusing on the R's today. Um, so there's repair as well. And then there's reuse, the cloth nappy workshop, which you can still get tickets for if you're interested in. Um, but yes, if you've just joined us, we did we did have a, a, a red cycle interview that we have recorded, which unfortunately we couldn't show, but we're going to be uh, providing that uh, via email to anyone who's registered for this section, um, which is which is great. Um, so so far, I guess we're gathered here today um, to to speak on this topic because um, it you know so far re re recycling up to this point has um has had has been in it, it had a bit of an uphill battle um we've had the uh the recycling crisis and 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 um where materials were where china stopped taking recycling materials from australia and then of course we're all in the middle of a of the covid crisis which we won't say much more about but but that's also can impacting on recycling a little bit so you know we thought well it's important to get together and and um, and I guess one of the aims of, of of the panel talk today is just to create some understanding, um, because uh, it's it's um, people are understandably wondering what's happening with recycle, uh, recycling right now, um, you know, and and despite everything that has happened with recycling, um, there's still a lot of community interest and and and, and desire to support recycling, um, but. At the same time, yes, it, you know, they, people are wondering, well, um, you know, I, I, I'm trying to do the right thing and um, are the, uh, is, is um, the recycling that I put in my bin, is it actually being turned into something or, or what's happening with it? So um, I'm sure that we're going to get a lot of, a few answers out there, you know, and just essentially today, it's also just about creating dialogue um there's some things that we just don't know but it's what we're what you know what you guys can tell us from your community um uh, what each of you have uh, can can uh, can say in that regard um so i guess to to start the discussion um we'll just start the discussion uh and hear from everybody all the panelists um and then we'll throw to the audience and answer questions because i i um, there's a, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of questions out there from people uh, about recycling. So, I guess could could you all let I guess maybe say to start things off, why why is recycling still important for our communities? Um, maybe if um, just because of the order 
of people. Maybe, uh, Rose, if you wanted to start us off, you're, you're to my right. So <laughs> I'm going around following. Um, would you mind starting us off on that? Why do you yep, think, it, why is it still important for, for the community? Um, yes, I mean, we are, we're talking about zero waste here as well. So um, I get that question quite often. Um, a lot of people are after asking, well, why should I recycle? Shouldn't we uh, refuse it in the first place? But uh, with uh, recycling made easy, one of the things I concentrate on are hard to recycle items. And, and that's what it's about. It's about using the resources. For instance, I doubt we get everybody to stop using mobile phones. So if people at least know to extend the use of their phone as long as possible and uh, when it is at the end of the life to dispose of it um, correctly. So I think that uh, people start to be a bit negative about recycling, um, understandably in the sense that uh, it's not just we shouldn't be a throwaway society, but at the same time, if you're conscious of the things that you do use and dispose of them properly, then it means that resource isn't wasted. Yes, that, that's very true. You know, at, at, yeah, that already you've um, yeah, hit a few points. It, it, like um, we uh, were saying in the uh, previous uh, lead-in re relating to recycle as well, um, yeah, if, if it, there's a lot of valuable material and um, it, it's, what, it's a, there's a good reason why recycling is part of the waste hierarchy and it's well before landfill because there's still there's still value in that material and it could be turned into something else. So thanks, Rose. Um, Joe uh, from uh, uh, City of Yarra, what would you like to say with that? Why is, it, why is recycling still important? Um, just, yeah, just to piggyback on what uh, Rose has said, obviously, obviously it's a resource, but I'd go a step further and say, it's not important, it's critical. You know, we can't do without the recycling. I mean, we're, Landfill a rate of knots. Um, most of that material is resource that we can, we can reuse. Now, if you think about the life cycle of a product, we're at a stage where we dig out a virgin resource and on average, under 12 months, that ends up in landfill. So can you imagine how short the cycle has become from virgin material to landfill? So there's this critical process in between so if you're going to become a consumer society, you must rescue the resource that's going to landfill. It's not just important, it is absolutely critical because it's a precious resource and we will run out. I mean, you hear people saying, we're going to run out of landfill space. We're going to, we are going to run out of resources because we're consuming at a rate never before seen in history. That's it. So yes, it's thinking. It's thinking too that when when there's so many, uh, so much consumption and, and and needing to still absolutely value that material so that um, yeah. we don't run, we don't. We're not using virgin materials to to create things. Yeah. Yeah. So, Thanks, so Joe. Um, yeah. 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 What about you, uh, Siobhan? What would you like to add to that? Yeah, I think Joe raised some really excellent points about um, the fact that, you know, whether it's consumer products or basically anything that's new that's made requires materials as inputs. So uh, we really need the market to develop in Victoria and Australia for recycled materials. An example that comes to mind of um, new ways of using material locally are things like recycled plastic in road base. So we can talk about larger kind of projects that use these recycled materials that can still come from consumer material. We've had an example in the city of Port Phillip last year, Mozart Street was resurfaced using um, discarded car parts. So recycling is really a, a big picture kind of opportunity from what we do at the household level to, um, you know, those really big infrastructure projects, a lot happening in rail as well, where again, as an alternative to um, extracting new resources if we get it right we can make some really wonderful things with recycled material yes that's right and, and um yes so there's lots of different ways in which um recycle those materials can be recycled um and, and industries that can use it yeah um thanks siobhan and what about yourself amy um what what are your thoughts on recycling and its importance just to add to what everyone else has said, I think there will be really important is just that 
um, often enough, it comes down to our choices. Um, and we as consumers have a, um, a great deal of power in choosing recycled products so that we can keep recycling things. And it's often um, recycling is the easiest thing that we can do to um, avoid sending waste to landfill. Um, so if we can all recycle at home and buy recycled products, then it just means that the system will work just so much more efficiently. Um, and we can keep having those conversations about, well, okay, now we're recycling, what else can we do? So I think that's um, the easiest thing that we all can do at home. And um, we don't have to go and look and up on papers or um, you know, attend sessions like this because it's something that we're already doing um, and something that we can certainly enhance. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thanks, Amy. Um, I think, yeah, everyone so far covered uh, like a lot of really important points and, and uh, why recycling still remains really important and particularly household recycling, which is what we're focusing on. Um, Kirsty, what would you like to add today from a Zero Waste Victoria point of view? Yeah, well, it's interesting. Amy made a really good point that we, if we, if we, we're not recycling unless we're using recycled materials. And uh, I wasn't going to mention this, but I will. My glasses here are made from recycled shampoo bottles. Um, and I'm really excited about that. I've only just started wearing glasses. I'm new to the world of, 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 of reading glasses. And uh, I got them just as we went into this isolation. But I've got them from Dresden who, who do that. And they're a Victorian-based uh, company, or maybe Sydney, but they're made in Australia from recycled materials. So it's really important to, to look at it. So at Zero, Zero Waste Victoria, we absolutely support recycling, but recycling isn't our primary focus. Uh, steps before recycling are what we look at more. It's more about avoiding and avoiding the waste before it gets to um, recycling. Mm -hmm. And I know something that we're very excited about with the state government's um, release of the recycling inquiry, one of the points that they made is they're actually looking at uh, supporting waste avoidance as a part of the recycling education um, uh, programs. And th this morning I, I woke up, I thought, no, I'm going to do exactly what I did to Parliament when I sat in front of them um, to you guys here. And what I did was I actually had this milk bottle or one, one like it and I said, this milk bottle is, is what I, I, I use for, for breakfast, but when it's fi I'm finished with it, it's going to go back to the supplier. They're going to refill it and use it over again. Whereas this glass jar, uh, technically, it's, it's not destined for that same sort of reuse. Now, while I might reuse it and put in pickles or tomato relish or something, um, the average person will put that into their recycling bin. It'll go away, get smashed up. Maybe it'll become a glass again, but it'll probably end up in road base. And, and to me, if we can actually avoid that type of recycling by just going, right, reuse this and reuse this, that's, that's our stronger focus. So yes, recycling is important, but if we can reuse it to limit that recycling, that's, that's even more important again. Yes, yes, that's, that's, a, that's really good point there, Kirsty, because um, yeah, it's a more nuanced um, uh, understanding than simply, oh, um, like, but you know, recycling is not the answer for for every for all of our waste issues at the moment. Um, yes, it's got a place, and there's some some great products that can be made out of it, remade, and some of some things are being remade back into what they originally were, but. Yeah, it's still still having to consider that there's a lots of ours that precede recycle. <laughs> so it's once you get to that recycle bit, you probably hopefully have would have addressed the other ones. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm just uh, going to another question, um, which uh, I'll, I'll open to whoever wishes to answer answer it, or I might select someone. Um, so what what developments have there been in recycling for your community since? since the, the, I guess, the recycling crisis. Um, and I don't know, but perhaps, um, Joe, would you want to start us off on that one? Yeah, I, I'm happy to do that. Um, if I can just lay a little bit of context. So 20 years ago, and I'll talk about just the recycling bin so that we can narrow it down to, to the core topic. Yes. We, we started collecting co what we call commingle recycling. Previous to that, we were separating out streams of material. So we started putting glass in our bins. That gets collected in a vehicle, it gets crushed, it gets smashed into other recycling. It goes to the recycling facilities, they further crush it. And then they're trying to undo all this soup. So what you end up with is, is just a, a bunch of contaminated material. We then opened up the export market 
and that had two impacts. So there's, there's two layers of, of contamination. There's the glass, and then there's people putting in material that just should not be in the recycling bin. Mm. It was we were exporting it, so the processes weren't coming back to us as councils and saying, listen, your material is really bad. You need to clean it up. You need to get some more education out there. And because the overseas markets needed it, they weren't complaining as much. The other impact of that was local markets just did not get developed. So our local markets just dropped right off. And then China hit, obviously, the, the national sword, which was a long time coming, by the way. And suddenly we had what we call a recycling crisis. Um, Yarra, for the past 12, well, probably 12 months ago, started doing a trial where we, we were separating the glass out. So we took about 1,400 households in Yarra. Our current base service is weekly garbage, weekly recycling. We, we cordoned off an area and gave them four bins. So suddenly they went from two bins to four. So we took Fogo food and grain out of the garbage bin. But we started separating the glass out of the recycling bin. And, and, the, and the focus of that trial was number one, as Kirsty said, try and minimize what you're bringing into your household to start with. Because the initial response was from the community was, we won't have space now. You know, we need more space in our, in our, in our garbage bin. So our primary focus was reduce and we separated the glass out. Um, then we started focusing on contamination in the recycling bin and we went to a fortnightly service as well. So we could minimize, you don't want to put a whole bunch of new trucks on the road. So we were trying to cover the logistics and emissions angle as well. Initially the community pushed back a bit, but we found that you know, after probably six weeks to three months, they actually started to embrace the system. So by the time we got to the end of the trial, we then did a post trial, quite a, an extensive survey. And people were telling their own story about how initially it was very confronting. And then once they started to understand why we were doing it and what we do, they actually adopted, so they actually embraced the system. The impact was if you go to the processing facility where we were taking the material, it was physically different because it didn't have glass in it, therefore it was clean. Normally when you're mixing glass, you get alcohol residue, you get sugar residue, which really impacts on the quality. But the processor was able to sell our material on the local market because it was so clean. So the quality with the glass out of it was very clean. The, gla the standard of the glass was excellent. Some of the, the results coming back from, from, from the survey was probably overall 85% acceptance rate for the system. And we got a- Very high. We got a heap of respondents in the survey. I think out of 1,400 or 1,300, uh, 400 responded, which was pretty high. So we found that there was an adjustment period. The real interesting thing, when we took our landfill average weight, what we found that I, when they went to fortnightly after about three or four months, we were getting the same weight over a fortnight that we were previously getting over the week. So in other words, you know, they'd halved the amount of material um, that was going into the bin. And, and that was without contaminating the other stream. So we thought initially, maybe it's just been transferred into the recycling in Fogo, but it wasn't. Um, so there was a very, very clear awareness. I think the system raised an awareness for people. It wasn't only just space in the bin, it was the reason and the story behind it. And, and we, <coughs> excuse me, we were also really, really honest. 
So when people called us and were complaining about it, we actually put accountability back to the residents and said, you understand that this is your waste. You understand that you actually need to be accountable for what you consume and put out. Um, we also went to the extent of saying from day one, if your bin's contaminated, we're not picking it up. We're not putting it in the vehicle. So it will sit there. You'll either need to get rid of it or you'll need to take the contamination out before we go back and pick it up. Um, it took us a while to get council or support on that one, but mm. support it and we did do it and we did stick to our guns. Um, so the contamination rate started to drop. So it's a, a, a huge topic, Carolina, that, that, you know, you need to tackle all ends of it, but the householder's participation is the most important because clean material means maximum recovery. So we, we yes. from probably with the four bins, probably from a 38% recovery weight rate to just above 62. So made a significant wow. difference in terms of what was going to landfill. And that has an impact on the processes. So if we can't separate it cleanly at source and then deliver it to a processor in a state that they can actually uh, separate it and sell it, then there is no point collecting it because you're just using more vehicles to take it to landfill. So the householder's part is absolutely critical. And it's all about good, clean material. And if you go back to the yeah. point as well about the reuse, obviously that should be the focus. So minimize waste, reuse what you can, extend the life cycle of things. Don't just throw them away if they don't need throwing away. But if you really have to throw it away, Put it in a recycling bin where it's high quality because high quality will equal recovery. So, yes. so really good, good yeah, result. Have, it, it, that, sound, that sounds like amazing, um, amazing outcomes. Just from, um, how, you've been trialling that for uh, about a year, is that right, Joe? Yeah, rough, look, probably about a year. We started with Foon only and then transitioned to the rest of it once the recycling. So we started with a food trial and then when the re what we call the crisis hit and we changed our thinking and thought, let's try and tackle this problem as a whole rather than doing mm. this. Let's take a holistic approach to it and see if we can actually get people to change their behavior. So it, it's really about behavior change, you know, yes. consume, changing your consumer behavior, changing your post-consumer behavior. So we thought, let's mm. get some good data that we can utilize across the municipality. So we were due to roll out a four bin system in July. COVID hit and the budget hit us, but we're now looking at rolling out potentially a glass bin just to, to make sure that our recycling uh, stream is clean. So we will be rolling out across mm. the municipality. Fantastic. Thanks, Joe. Now, those are some already some great numbers, and it'd be interesting to see what it would what um, having that glass bin uh, would do. And obviously, that the four bin system is 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 going to be rolled out eventually to all municipalities. So it's really great to get your insights when you're already sort of ahead of the game and trial. But yeah, and you're yeah. Sorry, you, you want to say something? Yeah. The the other critical bit is you know what we are lacking is good um, glass only recycling facilities or processing facilities, which we're sort of working yeah. in background with other other parties to try and get a proper plant up. But if you have a look at the recovery rate of the glass at the moment, the commingled system gives you 45% back for glass to glass. Mm. Separate yeah, right. give, gives you 90% for glass to glass. Huge difference. That's quality huge. difference is amazing. Actually, yeah, and that and that's actually yeah, and that was the biggest learning and uh, from the crisis and what was being coming out from that wasn't, it? and that that's why China uh, was refusing is refusing our, our, our materials because of the contamination rate, 
Um, so I think it, it's good it's that it, in, in many ways that it forced us still to become more, much more um, it, it aware and mindful. Like I think most people start their journey in terms of looking at um, re reducing um, and uh, reusing by looking at their what um, their recycling bin and be more mindful about that um, as well. That's certainly my my start of my journey. Um, Shabon, I'm, I'm 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 aware that the city of Port Phillip actually is trialing or starting to trial the um, the glass separation. So that'll be great to hear from you, following on from Joe. What what's that been like, and anything else you want to add? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Carolina. So, um, yeah, we've been trialling glass recycling separately since March of this year. Um, we're doing that in two ways. So we've got about 200 households that were given a separate glass recycling bin in Port Melbourne. And then we also have been trialling community glass bins in South Melbourne. So that's a communal bin that's in a public space in a park where several households can, can access it and deposit their glass there. So. It's been incredibly successful over the last three months. Um, we've increased the communal collection bins from being picked up once a fortnight to twice a week. And we've added five extra bins to the ones that were in place initially. So the uptake from the community has been absolutely tremendous. And um, you know, we, we really have to thank and acknowledge them because the contamination has also been incredibly low across both of those trials. And you know, contamination is, is an important part of this conversation because I think um, it's a term we use and it's not always clear what that means in the context of a single item that goes in the bin, but there's a bit of an indication we've seen contamination in those bins fall from about 28% at the start of the trial to 12% over the last three months. I think something else that Joe mentioned was really that aspect around behaviour change, you know, and, and maybe mm. change of attitudes as well. And I would have loved your comment, Carolina, about it's really being a journey for an individual or for a household or family maybe to go on. Um, I think it, it's, it's so important that people receive that encouragement and, and that it be quite a broad conversation because, you know, you've got this amazing, really passionate community of zero waste advocates here. And I imagine these people in a daily sense, you know, as, as we are as well, having conversations with others that are at different points on that journey. And um, to Amy's mm, point as well, you know, recycling is not a huge step. There, there are some barriers to overcome and that's that inconsistency, you know, what your friend or relative is able to put in their bin in another suburb, in another municipality might be really different. But having the conversation is still really empowering for people and it is still a really positive step as well where, you know, collectively we are the custodians for these resources and avoidance is at the top of that hierarchy mm -hmm. for a reason. Um, but anything we can do to to get people thinking and encourage them to go further on that journey themselves and really appreciate and want to recycle things is still a positive step. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Siobhan. Yeah, there's lots of really great points you're making there um, um, about behaviour change and also, Joe, you were mentioning that um, it's a collective responsibility. I think sometimes with... Um, uh, with this convers sometimes with these conversations they can become a bit um, you know finger pointing um, at, at certain whoever whoever might be the players involved the recycling companies whoever the councils etc but um, it, it's it's also about people being able to realize that there's a kit that you know we're, we're part of a system uh, and, it, and it's about community action and collective action um, in achieving this and that and that includes the aspects of reducing and having that just having those conversations with people where people realize oh okay i didn't realize that you could um i didn't even i didn't realize cloth nappies were really um uh, have really upgraded since since um uh, my grandmother used them or you know or i didn't even know they existed you know stuff like that uh, that's a, that's definitely something that um zero waste vicky is all about right kirsty is there something you wanted to add to that but for me um yeah, look, there, there is a lot of things and uh, I think the council people will know there are far too many stories. Nappies are not recyclable people, they're not. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. not. Um, I, I don't know how someone could even contemplate putting one of those into a recycling bin. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And some people, um, you know, it's just um, lack of awareness, like we've been saying as well, is, is that this is what this is about. It's creating dialogue and creating awareness. Um, Amy, how, what, what would you like to add from from um, the Mornington Peninsula perspective? Because it's great to have 
you with us too from a regional area um, because I mean, of Joe and Shabon being from an urban setting and perhaps, you know, it's going to be look very different in different areas, but um, what, what are your, what would you like to add in terms of developments there? Um, so we're in a very interesting space because um, even though we're sort of on the outskirts of the metropolitan Melbourne, we are still classed as being Metro Melbourne, funny enough. Um, yeah, though, no, um, so recently we, we completed um, a large round of community consultation as part of our new Beyond Zero Waste strategy that we're developing. And common things that come out of that came out of that community consultation was that there was a, this is still a strong desire from the community. This is the broad community, so not just those who sort of come along to events or um, other ones who are actively calling council. Um, there's still a strong um, support for recycling, um, and I would take that as really positive. Um, even from those who are sort of like sort of like not sort of seen as the traditional lefties or the greenies, um, and common um, comments was that. Um, we just want to know what to put in the bin. So there's, so there's, there's lots of confusion um, and the inconsistency between each of the different councils hasn't been helpful. Um, and um, they just want reassurance that they're doing the right thing. Um, and so it's difficult to get that feedback to the individual households because we live in such a busy um, and overstimulated environment so that to filter through to get those messages out to people can be quite difficult and that's a challenge that we face at council all the time um, but I think I just want to reassure people that the majority of people are getting it right um, it's only minor differences yeah. causing a bit of contamination and that's a bit of contamination that we can fix um, and it's the it's unfortunately the small minority who are putting nappies in the recycling bin or you know, throwing in their you know, couches or cushions that are causing the problems. Um, so it's just really important to get community confidence back into the recycling system um, so that they can re-engage and actually just, um, just congratulate them for um, sticking through this whole process and being so committed to recycling. I think that's really important. Yeah, um, I think that's, that's um, a good point there that, um, you know, sometimes if people feel like they're being perhaps judged for their practices or they, they know or they're, you know, told, oh, that's incorrect, to, you know, I mean, to a certain extent, it's important to tell people, well, maybe maybe you could try again with your bin because it's not right. Uh, it's not quite right. Um, but um, yes, if it's coming from a place of like, look, you know, uh, of, of education and um, raising awareness and understanding um, and, and, uh, and, and also like just um, rewarding good behaviour. Uh, I mean, I, 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 should I should have mentioned that um, um, my day job is as a community psychologist. So um, I'm well aware that um, rewards have great, like there's lots of evidence, research evidence that shows rewards um, produce greater um, better outcomes for anybody as collectively and individually than punishment so um yeah it is something to it is about like how do we bring people along and and, and educate but then also say yeah that's actually that's great that, that you're doing that like whatever the action is that, that people are, are made aware that that's really positive that they're contributing to their community in a way yeah, yeah um, um and, and rosa to, add to sorry there was yes about the, the glass recycling on the peninsula and I thought I, I'll just yeah. add to that so it's not something that we're looking at at the moment just because logistically we're located quite far away from the major glass um, manufacturers um, and mm. it's just it's not, at the moment it's just not feasible for us to se separate glass and have a, a separate truck to transport it across to the mm. of Melbourne um, but we're working with state government on that and so hopefully we'll have a more of a uniform rollout across the state rather than um, going alone like um, Port Phillip and Yarra has done because we just don't have the infrastructure down where we are. Yes, and, and, and thank you for, yeah, for, mm. for, for adding that because um, it's, going to, it's going to be very different depending on the council situation and the community that, that's there too. I mean, you're, you're, you guys are responding to that community need and it's going to look very, it's, you know, there's going to be some similarities perhaps about um, trends 
I guess you could say about recycling, but then there's going to be um, some unique um, differences. And then of course, yes, it's about who, who who's receiving that material at the end point, the recycling companies in the, in the, sort, in the glass sorting companies too. Um, Rose, um, I wanted to bring you in now and in, in, uh, in, in, into and add your thoughts, I guess more from um, your role as a, well, you're a, you're a cycling champion at, at Hubstons Bay, which happens to be my area too, so yay. Um, and also uh, you're, you're the founder of Recycling Made Easy. Um, and, and, and I think it's great to have you here because you're providing that perspective of, of um, a resident who decided to take some action around recycling and, and make it easier and bring more awareness about recycling. Um, for those items that are like not able to be put into the recycling bin, into the yellow bin we're talking about. So what, what would you like to add there in terms of how, what you've observed um, as developments in that space? Okay. Um, yeah, so what I, I um, quickly, after um, researching and founding Recycling Made Easy, um, I, that was sort of the, the next step as we're talking about um, your, you know, your recycling bin that's uh, curbside recycling. I actually then took a step back in a way because I realised that a lot of the people I spoke to didn't even know about their grassroots recycling. So although I was helping them with the tricky questions, uh, they still weren't getting their own recycling right. So I went around, just asked some family and friends, extended family and friends, and I was shocked that it, there was a lot of misconceptions. So the recycling triangle, as we call it, uh, made people think that if it had it, they could recycle it. So I think that with all of the new changes that are happening at Hobson's Bay, as part of a recycling champion, I was actually finding that a lot of the questions probably were actually not new. We were already recycling it in Hobson's Bay, but they're asking those questions now. So in other words, this new change actually meant people were being a bit more precise and really researching uh, what they're recycling and getting it right. So by partnering with local recycling manufacturers and putting the onus back on residents, I think it, it did have a, a, a real positive um, role. And um, I was at a lot of events where I'm a recycling champion and I'd say 100% of the time, they may have come to me very negative and wanting to actually voice their disgust at the change, for instance. And by the end of the conversation, they're on board. Um, so I think it's a lot of the time, if for instance, they would say, well, you know, we could, um, one of the changes that are happening at Hobson's Bay and to the people who are actually listening in is that not all of the recycling um, numbers. So you've got one to seven, and at the start of the trial, it was only one and twos. It's now thankfully also introducing number fives, but people were, so, were upset that that meant there was more going to landfill. And what I found is by saying to them, well, it's better to know and to be honest. So if we can't recycle and it's going into bin, then it was going into the bin anyway. Now you're consciously putting it in the bin and it, it made a lot of people look for alternatives. And that's what I was thankful for. So, for instance, um, you know, in, in myself, I, blueberries was an area that I still continue to buy soft plastic. But as soon as I was made aware that it wasn't getting recycled, um, I started to go to a, a local food market and get, get them loose. Obviously, that meant it's seasonal, but they're choices that you start to make because you are now putting them into landfill. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, that, that is I mean, just finish really off, really I suppose. Point. Yeah, I think to finish off the uh, sort of mine area, what I found was that most people wanted to do the right thing and we just had to sort of try simple. So at the end of the day, if people were aware exactly what could be recycled in each bin, and yeah, so I have on my um, Facebook page, I get a lot of queries because I'm mainly focused on Hobson's Bay. Um, I have no problems. People ask me questions. Clarify, I've clarified with the actual uh, partners um, and they've been really good. And a lot of things like very early on, uh, even though meat trays had this right recycling number, Hobson's Bay were very mm -hmm. honest and because they're thinned out, um, they're low grade recycling and they used to be picked out and thrown out on the production line. So, hey, get mm -hmm. the message out there. And most people that have heard about it are now just putting it in landfill or uh, before the COVID um, hit, a lot were uh, researching going to butchers and so on. 
and I'm sure that will happen soon enough. Yeah, yeah uh, that that's a re that's really great um, um, insights, Rose, because and it raises a lot of really good points because it's um, around it's about behavior change is about creating that awareness and sometimes it's about saying it's that, I think it one of the problems that everyone's kind of highlighted with the, the recycling in the past has been that because everything could it was almost like oh you could just put anything in there like get any number like there were specific numbers accepted but you know people maybe weren't thinking that through but now when when there's actually a really clear guideline saying we'll only take this especially around plastics which is, seems to be the major issue for a lot of places a lot of municipalities um you know we can only take these numbers and that's it then yeah that start to force other people to go oh oh okay but i still have like this whole other pile of perhaps plastics and and then it starts um, the questions come naturally you know and, and then we can yeah have that conversation about oh well yes as you can go to the butcher you can use your you could try um try asking them to put it in your container or you know um yeah did you know that but like you can't recite yeah you can't actually recycle uh, coffee cups and um because they have plastic lining in it and yeah that means that it's going to go into landfill so maybe use a takeaway cup but all sorts of conversations can come from that which then yes um like everyone pretty much was saying it's like that helps too with the actual reduction and reuse aspects so all right, so we'll go to some questions now. We'll, we'll probably um, have time for maybe a couple. Um, so luckily there's not too many at the moment. Uh, but when um, with the questions, I'll just sort of, I might pick one person to answer rather than everyone having to answer um, just because of time. But, um, or you can, you know, there might be someone who just wants to um, focus on it um, as well. You can jump in a little bit. So. We've got here, uh, Razbags has um, answered, uh, has asked about, doesn't recycled plastic road base create microplastics with wear and tear? And is it better to have recycled plastic products that have less wear and tear? Um, would maybe one of the councils like to answer that? I don't know, <coughs> Joe, would you like to give that a go? I'm happy to make a comment. Um, Look, there's been a fair bit of research in terms of, so the focus for us is obviously step one is get material out of landfill. And it's like any other process, that'll get more refined and, and, and the process will become better. The problems with plastic is, unless you've got single stream plastics, like one, one, one stream, they're a chemical cocktail. Like there's, there's 88,000 streams of plastic out there. I mean, we took one to seven. There's nearly 100,000 types. You can only recycle ones that have that single, single stream um, category. So our view is this, um, and it was the same as the glass. We're pushing to get the majority of the glass to the higher level so it can go glass to glass. It's the same with plastic. Yes, it, 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 it can create microplastics, but it's minimal. So all the testing is being done, uh, all the reg regimes are being done, the standards are there, and we're really still in the testing phase. So it has, the mixtures haven't been fully established. So there's a lot of work going on in this space. Um, so we've got a fair way to go. But unless you start doing the field trials, unless you start getting it out there, um, yeah. you're to the end point. Yep. So I, I'd say to people, it's fine, relax, it's really still in the testing phase. Um, we'll get better and we'll find, you'll find that as we start to kick in upstream and start to make materials easier to recycle, a lot of those plastics will diminish from the landfill because they'll be easier to deal with. And, and we won't have to find too many alternative uses. Because if you think about it, for glass, road, the road base is just a flat landfill. We don't want all the glass going into a flat landfill. We want to pull it back into that circular economy where we can make new glass out of it. And, and glass you can recycle infinitely if it's at the right quality and you get it back into the system. And it actually saves 1.2 tonne of virgin material. So 
it's important to get the manufacturing process right to start with. And what we're doing with all these other field trials are just testing what is and isn't possible. So it's the start of the journey, not the end. That's true. No, yes, that's right. There's a lot to be done. At least there's a, yeah, and that's the thing about, um, there has to be a trial and there, and there are going to be errors, isn't there? And, and, and there's no perfect system, but it, it's about what you learn from those errors and, and what, what is learned without it becoming um, too impactful, I guess, on, on the environment, um, I, um, which is fair point. Um, I might go to like just one other question, uh, but thanks, Joe, for that, um, unless there was someone that really wanted to add to that. No, but I can answer um, Rasbag's second question about um, incontinence, if you like, the incontinence pants, if you'd like me to do oh, that. Oh, I, I was thinking it might be better to go to... To your um, lead, your call. Yeah, I might go, I might, I'm just thinking, because although that, that that's, a, that's a fair point, um, do you have a quick answer to that? I have a very quick answer. They are available. There is such a thing as reusable incontinence pants. I'm actually going to, um, I've just uh, searched for a link. I don't use them, I can't say from experience, but I know that they do exist. Um, of course, it's getting out there, they're widespread, so that's that's definitely a, a, a thing. Yes, I think Google actually, it. even it. though, um, yeah, um, I think it, even though I, the cloth nappy workshop is focused on cloth nappies, um, Ellen, Ellen of Savini also does focus on a little bit on um, incontinence pads. I think she can, uh, she also provides that education. Um, so there's a, the other. There's a couple of other questions that are really important, um, I guess. And it, one of them is about. I'm just. I guess one of. I guess one of the main things that has come out from the community too is is issue of trust. And so it's like the question is how how will we overcome together these trust barriers in the community, um, thinking that you know everyone thinking that um, it's, you know, not just down to necessarily um, the council or uh, um, the recycling companies, but a number of different reasons. So what, how can, how can trust barriers be, be overcome so that people believe, I guess, invest um, their efforts into, into the circular economy and in actually um, continuing to re recycle properly, I suppose. Who would like to um, answer that? I'm, I'm happy maybe to, to make a contribution and then I, I imagine others in sure. on the panel might have something to say as well. I think, you know, it's, it's a yeah. really fascinating and really important question and it's a really big question as well. Um, speaking from a council perspective, you know, we really have one reason for existing and that's to provide for the community, so to provide services, to provide information, to provide support. So you know, there's something central there when we talk about the context of, um, you know, household recycling and, and the significant disruption that's happened in the last, you know, 12, 12 to 18 months that's put so much focus on the issue. Um, you know, one thing that I wouldn't want to leave without saying today is, is we're here and all of the education we do is, is really for community. So ask your council, you know, make that contact with your council, with your waste management department, um, you know, we're, we're forever wanting to establish um, resources that can be used differently. And I mean, Rose is a fantastic example of a resident who's, who's gone and created something and worked with council to, um, you know, really make resources more available and put them where, where, need, where they're needed. Um, I just, this is a little Bible for me that lives on my desk that I refer to, which is our sort of colour-coded A to Z guide for our community. We send out once a year, it's available online. But you know, if, if you're at the point where you're not sure either you want to talk to someone about what is happening with the material that goes in your bin, um, you want someone to, to come out and you know speak to your apartment building or a school, or, or you just want some resources sent to you, print, downloadable, any of that stuff, you know, I would say call your council. Um, have a look on their website because it is different place to place, and we're really there to help the community navigate that. You know, there's, there's so many reasons for that inconsistency and something like the 10-year the plan will really help to address that. Um, but in the meantime, you know, we would also say if in doubt, put it in your waste bin rather than contaminate recycling with, with a particular item, a particular material. But we'd, we'd prefer much more, I think, 
for, for people to call us. And I wanted to say as well, you know, to the point of things being um, trial and, and trying new things and experimenting, um, we had a lot of success over the summer period. We um, had a, a team of six sort of roving waste educators in the city of Port Phillip who did a lot of pop-up engagements, so um, on beaches, in parks, and shopping strips, and really just got out and, and spoke with the community and sourced feedback for us. We want to hear and we really want to know what people are thinking and, and what are the problems as well, where are the, where are the questions, um, where are the concerns so that we can respond. So we get out there and promote a lot around waste avoidance, but make sure people are aware as well of, of what's kind of applicable for them in the local context, because we touched before on yeah. what I would call wish cycling, which is you may know or you may feel that a particular item and material can be recycled, but it is often so much more complex than it going in your yellow lidded recycling bin. So, you know, I would just like to say for, from City of Port Phillip perspective, certainly, and I, I think for all of us, you know, reach out and make contact with council or direct people who maybe are um, in need of that information to do so, because it helps us understand as well what we might be able to do differently to help. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure that everyone here uh, would agree that uh, that yeah, local like councils are um, a resource and they they're there to to help and, and and support their residents. You know that's their function. Um, uh, and so um, it's about just starting that conversation, maybe from a place of just inquiry. Even if you are not happy with what's happening, it's okay to be like, well, you know, I'm not happy. But I'd like to know more why that this is that not happening rather than coming at it from a very aggressive point of view. Yeah, um, it's okay to say, "Oh, I just don't like what's happening," and then have start a conversation. Um, and and in what you're saying, Siobhan, is that and, and I'm sure Joe and Amy and and Rosa Gray and Kirsty that um, that it, there's people that are willing to answer those questions. And through that conversation, you you find out what's ha actually happening. It's a lot better than sitting in, sitting in uh, in the dark and going on, it's not, well, in feeling angry. Um, would anyone else like to add something to that? Uh, um, I don't yeah. know, Amy or, or Rose. Just a quick um, sort of a, a general context about um, trust in institutions. In, I think there's been general trends to say that trust in governments and sort of um, um, institutions have been declining in the past couple of years and so there's this little whole mixture of, of reasons for that but it's just um, where we get our new sources um, has shifted quite a bit with social media and the internet um, so I think it's just not just an issue within waste but in the broader context of our society um, and so mm -hmm. one way that we're really conscious about um, how we report back to the community is, is about um, using transparency and say, well, this is what we know and this is where we've got that data from and this is what we don't know. Um, and just having those open conversations has been really important and also reporting back in sort of in a very community friendly way, um, not sending out you know, 20 page reports to say, okay, it's in the report, you haven't read it. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, other ways that we can actually engage and, um, and have those conversations with, with our community because it, it is a changing landscape and um, councils have been a bit slow. Um, some councils, I would say, have been slow to sort of take that on because of um, multiple layers of approval process that we have often have to go through. Mm -hmm. as um, but I think just to um, echo some points, it's just having, it's really important to start, have those um, open conversations and ask those questions because if, if I don't know the answers but I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to say and I'm sure others will say well I don't know the answer to that but let me go away and have a think about it and I'll come back to you um, and yeah. we, that, that's the only position that we can start from. Hmm. Yeah that's, that's, that's exactly right and um, yeah th that's a good point too Amy about it's um it's this issue is kind of it, there's le different levels to it and sometimes I guess particularly the councils um they they you, you guys can because you're at the cop more closer to the coalface you're you're, you're representing the a community people got look to you first um even if the issue actually lives at uh, at a manufacturing level perhaps part you know part of the the, the answers are also at um, industry level or at state government level um you know the, the four bin system rollout that's a good example where um you know certain councils like 
City of Yarra and, and City of Port Phillip are, take, are, are doing, um, within, within their budgets and their plans, are adopting things, maybe uh, uh, looking at, into this a lot sooner. Um, and, not, and of course, you guys knowing what, what's coming up ahead with state government too, I'm sure that I know that you guys keep um, in con you have that uh, stakeholder partnership with them. Um, but then it, that's really man been mandated now by state government. So it's, it's you know, um, it's something that will happen to all municipalities because it's been mandated. So the councils are just trying to find the best way to do that. All right, guys. Well, look, we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you, everyone, uh, for um, for talking, joining us today. And um, and uh, and uh, now we will be having a, 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 a another um, inter an interview with Men at Australia, uh, and and that's uh, Danny and, Car uh, and Karen in in the, in the corner there. Um, so uh, uh, there'll be. Um, information from from this section being emailed to everyone today so thanks everyone for joining us thanks to all the panelists and um we'll go into uh, uh an interview with Mended Australia so stick around yeah. thank you